tomorrow. Well, Bank of America will be the focus on Capitol Hill today. Specifically, the role of former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, the role that he played in the costly takeover of Merrill Lynch last year. Republican Congressman Darrell Ice of California, ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, will be questioning Mr. Paulson, and he joins me this morning from Washington, D.C. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me back, and, and it certainly is going to be an important day because we've had two out of the three necessary hearings to close the loop on the, a threat that was clearly issued, uh, a Fed chairman who wants to distance himself from the, the threat, and as it appears from his uh, printed testimony, uh, Paulson, who's willing to say, yes, I delivered it, yes, I think it was appropriate, and now we can begin looking at was it appropriate. So just specifically, Congressman, the perception here is that Ken Lewis was strong-armed by the former Treasury Secretary. And the former Treasury Secretary, in his prepared testimony, suggests, I did strong-arm strong -arm him because he legally and contractually had to go through with the deal. If that is, in fact, the case and it was a legal obligation, what do you think you'll achieve today? Well, I think what we're going to achieve is whether or not it's appropriate uh, for those kinds of that kind of power and more to be granted on a permanent basis to any entity, whether it's the Fed or, uh, or the Treasury. Because as you understand, the reforms being proposed talk about the systemic risk uh, authority that on a permanent basis would allow some entity, presumably the Fed, to wield authority at least as great as they did with GM, Chrysler, and in this case with Merrill Lynch and Bank of America. Uh, those of us in, uh, on my side of the aisle, I think, pretty unanimously believe that should not be granted behind closed doors. Remember, part of the problem here was not only the threat, but locking out other regulatory agencies from even knowing what was going on, yes. including the FDIC. Yeah, no, excellent point, because there was a lot of talk, not only the FDIC, but also the SEC as well. Does this come down to, Congressman, the issue of whether or not he should have been threatening Ken Lewis's job in the first place, or whether or not we were under extenuating circumstances and therefore communication and things of that nature didn't live up to their expectations. And some would argue that's kind of what's happening to CIT uh, in the past couple of days as well. Have we learned our lesson? Well, and CIT is going to be an interesting, more open uh, debate about whether they should fail. But in this case, uh, you know, often people say the end justifies the means if the end comes out okay. In our case, we recognize that under the extreme pressure these individuals were under and not necessarily knowing on a global basis what their actions could cause or not cause, they did the best they could. We're not playing gotcha politics, at least I'm not. Our goal, though, is to look forward and say, based on what we saw, these abuses, if you will, or what happens when you give this kind of power and money, do we need to have better controls in case this ever has to be done in the future? I think the answer is self-fulfilling. We do. We need to make sure we have more open transparency, and we need to have more people informed and able to weigh in, including probably the courts, before the fact, not after the fact, uh, the way it was with GM and Chrysler. So this is so, bigger than just one threat by one man. Yeah, so quickly, Congressman, I would assume then that this is actually a fact check finding expedition to help you prepare for what regulatory overhaul should look like, not in two months, not in three days, but in the long term. Absolutely. And uh, we pushed for a commission that was named yesterday. Uh, our committee uh, plans on weighing in heavily to the information they consider as they look at recommendations going forward. Again, just like 9-11, you, you need commissions, you need thought, you need history, and then you need to have a nonpartisan go-forward solution. And we're fighting to make sure we get that. All That's right. why these hearings on a bipartisan basis with Chairman Towns were so essential. All right, Congressman Darrell Issa, as always, I appreciate you taking the time. We'll be watching you starting Thanks at like. 10 a.m. Thanks so much. Of course, we'll be carrying that live. Please do. Uh